Hello, uh, welcome to this session. In the previous session, we looked at uh, clock buffer or you can say CMOS clock buffer where we buffered the oscillator output coming from the oscillator using an inverter like this and then connected here. We chose an optimum value of the capacitor CAC which is the AC coupling cap and this was connected to VDD. Okay, this out is the output of the oscillator and this is clock. So now, uh, well, uh, if you think about it, uh, you will get the desired clock. The buffers will add some amount of noise. Now, this particular inverter, when you are doing a power optimized design, this particular inverter which you are seeing here, this inverter is conducting current is always conducting current actually okay because your gate and drain are shorted so both pmos and nmos they are always conducting so sometimes it happens that this inverter has a lot of uh, power or current consumption okay so because this inverter has a lot of current consumption there are two alternatives okay uh, one of the alternative is that in place of using this inverter connected back to back, uh, you connect that using a large resistor. Okay. So, let me try it a little more clearly. So, you have a resistor like this. Well, this is connected to VDD and this is connected to ground and this is RF. So, when you connect a resistor in feedback across the inverter, you input and output this inverter is going to be biased for sure uh, like this. Okay. So, it is going to be biased like this. So, PMOS and NMOS, they are still conducting current always and they are biased in saturation. Your DC operating point is, is such a way that this potential V in and V out, they both are same. Okay. So, with this feedback resistor, the thing which changes uh, here is that because you are having a resistor, large resistor here. So, when you are going to connect your oscillator with this load, so you have an oscillator and when you connect this particular inverter, so you have uh, an AC coupling cap like this. We have chosen the AC coupling cap in such a way that uh, at our frequency of oscillation, this AC coupling cap acts like a short. Okay. So, for the frequency of the oscillator x like a short. So, you have you are loading your oscillator with this particular buffer. Uh, this is the buffer now. right? So, when you load it, the current which is going into this uh, load will be minimized because the impedance is earlier. The impedance in this case which is seen by your uh, oscillator is 1 by GMP plus GMN plus S whatever the parasitic capacitance. Now, in that impedance you get feedback resistor okay, which increases the impedance seen from here because it increases the impedance. So, the current drawn from the oscillator, the current which is drawn from the oscillator I can call this as I L, this current will depend on the impedance seen and if you are loading with a very low impedance that means a lot of current will go in driving that right and it is also going to change the output frequency. Ideally, if I say that the looking in the buffer uh, case the looking in impedance ZL tends to be infinity right, then your buffer will not actually uh, load your is you are loading your system with infinite impedance it is not going to change the frequency it is not going to take any current from the oscillator. But when you are loading with the self 
bias inverter in this manner, you have a low loading which change which draws current from the oscillator and changes the output frequency. So, to increase that impedance, we actually introduce this resistor RF. The current consumed within the inverter is still remains the same as it was. So, there were couple of problems as I told. One thing is the current which is consumed in this buffer and this is still remains the same. We, uh, we have not yet uh, uh, tried to address that. The thing which we address is the current drawn by the buffer from the oscillator. Okay. And in the same way, you can also say the frequency changes in the oscillator because of the buffer. Those two things are minimized. The second option which we have or which you can utilize, you want to bias this node or you can say you want because I am following up my uh, the cell bias inverter with inverters uh, to amplify the signal. right? So, somehow I need to get this voltage here which is uh, the, uh, the same voltage as we get for the self bias inverter, but I do not want to consume a lot of current by connecting in this manner. Okay. So, how to do that? Another option which we have is the following. So, in place of, so let us say when I had this inverter connected in this manner like this, right? I assume that this is VDD, this is 0 and this potential happens to be VDD by 2. The current which is consumed will depend on your uh, gate overdrive and threshold voltages. right? So, I change my top and bottom branch or you can say I stop this inverter itself in such a way that if I use two cascodes here or you can say if I increase the length of this device both NMOS and PMOS, then the uh, power consumption is going to be lesser. So, what I do is increasing the length is typically same as this. So, in place of using the self bias inverter as uh, shown on the left, I go and use the inverter as shown to you on the right. Okay. So, if I do this, then I can very well design this uh, circuit such a way this voltage is also VDD by 2. The current consumption in this circuit, so if I call this as current I1, the current which is flowing here is I1 and the current which is flowing here is I2, your I2 is surely less than I1. I am using the same MOSFETs, let us say WP by L and W n by L. So, this is W p by L size is the same. So, if I do this, then the I 2 current is going to be lesser. So, you can reduce the current consumption in the self bias inverter, but all other inverters which you are seeing here, all these inverters are going to be same as simple single inverter, not we are not going to do anything to that. Okay? There is a trade-off in doing this, right? The trade-off in doing this is that when you connected more uh, devices at the gate node, the parasitic capacitance increases. You are having double the length, so surely you will have uh, larger areas. The parasitic capacitance will be more, and because the parasitic capacitance increases. Now, to respond to the increase in the parasitic capsules, you have to increase CAC. Okay. So, there is uh, a limit on this, you cannot overdo this. So, maybe you can think of going from uh, 2 invert cascode of 2 MOSFETs, you can even try with a cascode of 3, but you know what you are losing now. Okay. So, what you lose is the area for CAC and more loading coming because of CP, but you save on the power which is consumed in the self biased inverter, that is what you do. Okay. So, surely not more than 2 or 3 uh, cascodes you, you can use in your CMOS clock buffers. Okay. 
So, this is the way in which we can actually uh, buffer our CMOS clocks use with the oscillators. Okay? Thank you.